Mr. Jenkins, please. Can you swear it will affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be true and all truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. State your name for the record. Daniel Jenkins, J E N K I N S. <coughs> Thank you. What is your current position? I am the uh, Bureau Chief of the Bureau of Project Management of the St. John's River Water Can you ever Have you ever had a connection with this one river water management district? Yes, prior to coming to the St. John's district. In September of this year, I worked with the Swanee River Water Management District from July 2009. Thank you. And are you familiar with the Falmouth dye test that was performed? No, I am not. Just on the outside, I knew that it was going on. I was not involved. But did you know any kind of results that were produced? No. Okay. Um, nothing in general? The die went in somewhere, the die came out somewhere, but the specifics of where those locations were, no, I'm not familiar. Okay. And let's go ahead and turn to what we've referred to many times before is uh, what's marked as R. And those books right there, which is these are exhibit G, but it has been admitted into evidence as petitioner exhibit five. From April 18, 2014. Okay. Does it look familiar to you? Yes, it does. I co authored this with Carlos Hood. Okay, thank you. In this memorandum, you say the planned trenching for lane pipe may intersect. Well, this is the bottom of page one after impacts on water resources. You state, the planned trenching for laying pipe may intersect the local water table along the proposed route that will likely be the Floridian aquifer system. Based on underlying carbonate bedrock, which is the primary freshwater aquifer for the Swanee River Water Management District in the state, providing drinking water, agricultural, and industrial water, and feeding the springs and river systems located in the district. Do you recall what you meant by that it could possibly affect the aquifer there? What, what were you speaking of? Do you recall? Um, well, first of all, it's that we, the district, formulated this, so I didn't like this section personally. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, what does it say it affects something? Mm -hmm. Will likely be in the Florida aquifer system based on underlying carbonate bedrock. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, if it's not in that section, perhaps let's move on to the section where you speak of horizontal drilling. That's on page two. Okay. On the last paragraph there, you say, in some local areas, horizontal drilling near streams and rivers could impact local flow systems. What do you mean by that? Do you recall? Well, in, in general, um, it's, it's very um, site specific, obviously. Parts of the is an issue that you'll find throughout the Swan River District. It's possible that you, know, you have conduit flow in some areas, fracture flow, matrix flow, which you don't have any conduits. It's all kind of different. And so if you're doing some sort of horizontal drilling, you can intersect a fracture conduit flow. You know, Thank you. And then when, if you continue on, you say some possibility of restriction or redirection of groundwater flows exists. This could affect groundwater flow for local springs that impact annual flow levels. Do you see that one? It's the third sentence in there? Yes. Okay. Yes, some possibility does exist, yes. Okay. And what do you mean by minimum flow levels? Well, minimum flow levels are established by the district, and it's the levels of flows at which Levels and flows at which further withdrawals or things of that nature could drop the level or flow below a level that is protective of the environment. Okay, 
So are you, uh, what would happen if you went below those minimum flow levels? Then you would have to recover it. Okay, and what's that mean? It means you would have to find a way to reestablish that level. Okay. And are you aware that there will be any horizontal drilling in this proposed project? Because they will go trail pipeline? Yes, to my understanding, there's two of the crossings. Additionally, in this memorandum, you state this is on the last page, page three, in bullet point number two, that grouting and cavernous porosity zones may be ineffective. Excessive grout pumping may cause localized groundwater contamination and pump into flow systems. Now, are you familiar with the cave system is the sound of cave system? Just yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Wonderful. And do you have any idea about how big that cave system is or where it's located? No, I mean it's in the northwest part of Swan County. If you turn around, does that map help you place where the cave system is? Um, specifically that pink line I know everything's brightly colored on that map. Right. Um, okay, according to that legend, that is a cave system. Data source Mike Hopper. Mm -hmm. Do you know if that is the Falmouth cave system? I believe it is, and that's based upon the location of Lime Run Spring, which I believe is in that system. Okay, thank oh, and there's another one. Since fell in spring, so yes, I'm assuming that's it. Okay, great. And that, that map was made by the Swan River Water Management District. Um, that's their disclaimer on it, so I imagine that's the case. Okay. Um, I would now like to try to move in that map, additionally with the pink line on it that delineates the cave system. Now, the authentication from Mr. Jenkins. The 11. It's authenticated, perhaps, but relevance and hearsay is still. Uh, the relevance is, uh, do you know if the pipeline will be going through the Falmouth Cave system? No, I do not. Okay. Well, let's say if it is, which, if it is going through there, which I think the, public, the record does say that it is, um, what kind of concerns would you have as concerning specifically grouting in that? Excuse me, Judge, I mean, I think you've made a point several times that concerns are not the issue here. What kind of impact might there be um, with in terms of grouting when the pipeline goes through that case? Well, objection, foundation. One, where is there grouting? When is it going to be used? And in what location in reference to the case system? I believe that you've already stated previously that there was no, we have not. I don't think we have. Maybe you have. <laughs> <laughs> Are you aware if what in your memorandum here you specifically stated on Mr. Jenkins that grouting would be a concern in a particularly cavernous the porosity, um, cavernous porosity zones? If they were to use grouting in the area of this cavern, is it, are there any particular impacts that there would be? Well, one thing I need to understand is what do we mean by grouting here? Because that could be loose cement grout, which is different than a bentonite slurry or a high density clay grout. Mm -hmm. They're two different things. I'm not sure I understand, first of all, what grout is in this particular instance. Well, we'll move on then. They've already said that they're not going to be using blasting. Um, so you think the last one 
last bullet point on the last page there. Um, however, um, with blasting, what about the blasting do you think is the part that would be dangerous to karst topography in the area? The specific Well, it just says that anecdotal evidence suggests that limestone mine blasting may have caused the sinkhole formation in areas of west central Florida in the past, but the scale and scope hasn't been documented. So I'm not sure I'm able to respond to that. Do you believe it was the actual, do you think it was the noise? Do you think it was vibrations? With blasting, do you have any idea what it might have been that would have caused? Sinkhole formation as a result of blasting? I don't know if it says it caused sinkhole formation, it's a mayhem. Yes, it says limestone mine blast, oh, mayhem. It's just mayhem. You're not sure if it would be the vibration or the noise? Well, I've never been associated with any limestone blasting, so I, I, I couldn't really tell you. Okay. Just one second, let me look over in a minute to give you the next question. You said you're not familiar with grouting. I, I am familiar with grouting, but the word itself, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a couple different types of materials. And if there was drilling fluid used in this project, which I believe there is, um, are there any particular impacts from that uh, drilling fluid? Well, the drilling fluids I'm familiar with would be a they bed night clay, a clay slurry. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so if, from a drilling standpoint, I think the I'm only familiar with one impact. It could be a temporary impact to an aesthetics of a water body. If it gets <coughs> to that water body. But as far as any health effects, uh, to my knowledge, bed night clay is is a inner type of material. provided to date, we recommend that the pipeline route be reconsidered to avoid sensitive karst regions that can have a significant impact on the water resources within the Swanee the Water Management District. Okay, thank you very much. Quick redirect, This same paragraph, you actually started in the middle of the very first sentence says that the district does not oppose the installation of the pipeline, correct? Correct. And this memorandum was written before the ERP for the pipeline was even submitted to your knowledge, correct? To my knowledge, correct. And are you aware that there have been reroutes in this area? I understand that. That's my understanding, yes. No further questions? No questions, Judge. All right, thank you, sir. I just want to make sure we like to call data.